All right, here we are again. And I am going to show you how to use stencils uh, for creating your imagery. So, uh, oh, I did work on this stamp a little bit more. And you can see kind of what's possible when you start to open up areas and leave areas dark. Again, it's still not the best. It kind of looks like a raccoon or a bear, not a fox, but <laughs> it's okay. But I kind of like this hot pink paper with those other colors, the blue and the green and the red are interesting. And I can imagine a pattern starting to come together with that. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys that. Cut a little bit more of that stamp. I'm going to use this text paper again to do the pochoir. P-O-C-H-O-I-R. It looks like pochoir, but it's pochoir. And it is stenciling. And that's what we're gonna, I'm going to show you today um, in this demonstration. So. I left all of my stuff on the other side of the table, so let me go grab that. And then, this is one of my favorite ways to make imagery. Um, it's just really nice, and it's, it's soft and it's clean. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate the more difficult part first, and this is for people that really like precision. Um, and you can see this stencil is cut from that same photocopy that I showed you before. I created a stencil from this image. So the materials I'm going to show you, this is called Duralar. And it's a nice stencil uh, material because you can reuse it. You can wash it and let it dry um, and reuse it, which I really like. But you do not have to have that uh, to make a stencil. And I will show you other materials that you can use when we get to the, the more abstract and loose uh, technique. So for this, what I did is I just taped down. I did it with, you know, I taped it down because this was going to be pretty precise. Um, these are examples of the printed piece using different colors. And then I actually don't like to do this when I do things by hand. I start doing something different as soon as I get away from it. So um, I like kind of these pieces as abstract instead of just making a representative image like that, which is what I do really with my work. Uh, but most of the time, I don't know, on letterpress, that's what I want to do. But with other techniques, I don't. So I started out by cutting three pieces because I decided I was going to do a three color image. Keep that kind of in frame there. And then I just decided uh, I would start with the big outline and then what you have to decide which pieces you're going to make, you know, a, a stencil for. So I decided to, I would make a shape of the kind of the outline of the face. I wanted these teeth separate. Um, so I kind of planned for that. And then, so you can see on my photocopy that I made these little cross marks. And that those are what I use to register every one of these. So starting with the first one, I put those crop marks on and I actually just transferred them on with a pen. And then I cut them out later because then I can use it when I'm stenciling. Um, and I'll show you that when we get to it. So this, I just drew the image onto the film and then cut it out with my exacto knife so I just came over here and cut my shape how I wanted it and I left the nose also uncut so that's just the, the shape of the face then the next stencil I laid on so I did keep these pieces all the same size because I felt like that was going to help me stay consistent so these are all the same although oh wait maybe they're not because I, I was going to say, if I did these registration marks, I'm not so sure that matters. Because if you have something you can register, yeah, they're not the same size. They kind of look about the same. Sorry about that. This was years ago that I did this, so I can't remember. But um, yeah, so as long as those two marks line up, that's why I made those registration marks like that, so that I could line these pieces up later, and it didn't matter what shape they were. But that's another way, is you could just be really precise about where the image is placed on uh, the Duralar. And what's nice about this is you can see through it. 
that's the only thing is if you're going to do this technique, you need something that you can see through and it needs to be firm. So the Duralar is going to be your best bet. Um, and it's really useful for a lot of things. And I, that's um, on our Dick Blick page. So you can buy a pad of that if you're interested in this. Okay, so that's the first one. And then the second one is, I guess I'll just lay these on top of each other. So this is the teeth and the hair. And again, I can just kind of lay those little crop marks on top of each other so I can line it up. I don't know if you guys can see this. But that's the eye and then like the gums and then some of the hair. So let me take this one off. This, was got, this has got old paint on it. I actually think I used paint for this at one point, but now I use stamps. So maybe you can see that better. You can see. So that's the second layer or the third. It really doesn't matter the order. And then the final one is those teeth, the nose and the eye and the ear. So I think this is like part of like the eyeball is the darker one. And then this is like the larger part of the eye. Okay. And again, those cross marks again, every time. So that's my image I started with. And then, then I've got these pieces. So let's try one. I'm going to do it on this yellow paper. If you're interested in this paper, this is just from like Staples and Office Supply. This is Astro Bright's paper. Nothing special. It's a big pack of all these different colors. If you want to use some, because it's pretty good quality. I'm going to start with that background image. Here's where I need stenciling brushes. And so, bring those out. I think they're on the other side. Yep, everything's on the other side. So I did bring out the stenciling brushes. And I set, I have, this one is a dual head, which is nice. So it has the green and the red and orange. So what I, I have a huge set. I have like probably 15 of these. And I keep one, I try to keep them in the same family as far, now the white one is only for the white which is what I think I'm going to use for this because it's the lightest color and we'll just see how it works. But you can see I've got one for this teal color and this, these two are going to get shared with that brush. So you just, you do need a stenciling brush for this and you want uh, a flat. So that's what it looks like. That flat top brush. This is like a one inch. This is from a set. This is 18. Um, so I'm going to take and I'm going to push into the pad, just kind of ink this up. And again, if I really want to keep it where I want it. I can tape it down and then I just have like a little bit of tape over there so I could tape this in place. And what is nice about this is now I could take my pencil and use that to mark my little squares. I'm just drawing around it. So that way I don't have to get ink in them. They're not going to show in the print. And here I'm just going to take, and I'm kind of going in circles. Of course, my brush is right over what I'm doing. So you kind of can't see, but you'll get a sense. I'm grabbing some more. And this is, this stamp pad is crazy inky. Really, really strong. I must, it must be new. I mean, for this part, I really do want to kind of have an even coverage, so I'm not so worried about the fact that it's heavy. But there are times where I don't like that. So I'm just kind of going around in light circles, kind of almost like a figure eight, but then kind of in one direction, and then I'll go back the other direction. And if you have like a low tack tape, that's going to be better because it'll come off easier. 
it didn't tear. It was okay. I didn't push too hard. So now I can wash the stencil when I'm all done. I'll just set it over to the side for now. Um, and I think I'm going to do this layer next. And so I can line up those holes. And I just kept my tape and it, I kind of got ink in there. If you do this tape process, you could just, you could not cut these holes and actually just transfer that little cross mark each time. And it, you know, I don't know, somehow you've got to keep it registered. That's why I did it this way. It seems to be all right. And for this part, I think I am, let's see what, I guess I'll do the red. I'm using the right end of the brush and I'm going to try to keep it light because this gets a little strong. This is definitely, I can tell on this stencil, it was, it was paint, acrylic paint. And that's, you can do that. It's just hard to keep it really dry and soft. Now, when you get to these little, little pieces like this, this gets hard because you can see here, like it wants to pop up. This is why the Duralar is really what you need for this, this process if you want to do precision, because if you're, you know, a paper stencil is going to get worn down. And you can kind of do like a little fade. You can be dark on one end. And I'll show you more of that when we get to the other part. I try to be very diligent about keeping my lids on because I'm worried about my ink getting dried out. Okay, my second layer. And I'm going to take that. And again, I can go wash this later. And I'll do the blue last stencils here. And I do this one more time. I try to get it pretty lined up and then I can kind of rotate it around and then put this down. I can see the bristles are kind of coming out of these brushes. That happens. It's interesting because it's on this yellow paper, so some weird things are happening. It's kind of interesting. Over that white, too, it kind of stays the true color, but then you can see the yellow underneath. Reveal. That's kind of cool because of the yellow paper. It's interesting because you can see where it hits that white, it stays blue, but where it's on the yellow, it's green here. So this is cool. I mean, it's definitely worth the work. Um, you get this cool effect of, of kind of like a screen print. Uh, but it's much rougher, but you can also plan for that overlapping too, if you wanted to get more of that effect. And if you did it on white paper, maybe you could use like a gold color here and then, you know, your colors are going to stay pure, but that's that kind of overlapping, like that's going to be kind of a purple where that red and that blue overlap. And then you get this other color where that greenish blue because of the green, I don't know, it's, it's cool. I think there's a lot of options there. So that's if you want to do something precise with your stencils, there is that option. And I encourage you to do that because you can see it's, it's really a, a neat effect. Um, so I'm going to show you now some stencils, some stenciling crochet with them. Um, that's more abstract. And you can even see, I showed you earlier, like on this one, I used those same pieces and then I had another 
open stencil that I just used. And you can see, I really like those teeth. And so I could see making a pattern with just those teeth. And you could keep your stencil just on that area and stencil and repeat uh, that, just that one part. Um, maybe I'll show you a few books that have stencils. This is uh, actually stamps. This was done with those pieces that I was telling you about. I cut one stamp and then repeated it through the book. This might not show up very well. Bright yellow. But I created sort of this landscape using just a few stamps and just repeating them through sort of have a story about, I don't know, construction and destruction. This is an accordion book that my book arts class will make. So this is one of those times where you can use stencils, you can make the book and then print in it. So this is with stamps. That's an example that uh, this I can take the spine out. I can't remember if I did anything on the back. Oh yes, I just did kind of repeat of this little thin X that carries through the book. It's almost like a character in the story. So again, I could display the book like that. And that's just maybe five stamps and in the edges of stamps. That's a nice example to see what's possible. Really simple, uh, but it's what you can do. And then these are a combination. That's a stamp and stenciling. So this is a stencil. And I have that stencil, so I can show you that. But this is a book called Rabbit. And this is just a book that I, this is only one copy of this, but this is done with stamp, uh, the stencils and the stamping. And again, it's sort of a nonverbal book where the images are the characters that tell the story. So that's that book. And then this one I don't think is complete. But this is an example of the light color stenciling uh, ink on a darker paper. This is a handmade cave paper. Okay, maybe this book doesn't have content. Oh, it doesn't. This is one that doesn't have any content in it. Sorry. But I just think that cover is really nice. And so I wanted to show you guys that all of these. And we're going to make this book. We're not going to make it now, but you could, these can kind of live in your mind, put them in the back of your mind as things you can possibly do. Um, and, and when I show you guys books, uh, I can show you some more things like this. Okay, so let's do a little bit of stenciling. And I'm going to show you how to cut a stencil. So I have a whole bunch of stencils already cut that I just save and use repeatedly. And you might recognize some of his shapes from the things that I showed you. Let's see if I can find that lightning bolt. See it in there. Yeah, there's that baby. I love that one. So these are all made with that Duralar. <laughs> and a lot of times I'll keep, you know, the interior piece and the exterior. So this is like what I cut away. And then this is the piece that I cut away. So I want to keep that because sometimes I'll use the edges of things as repeat. So this is super exciting to me because I really enjoy doing this. So this is a piece of dural art. I'm going to show you how to cut something out of this, but I'm also going to show you how to cut it from like a piece of cardstock. So this can so quickly get messy. I'm just going to set stuff to the side for a minute. I'll have to clean up everything later. Um, these out of my way so I can cut the stencils and then we'll play around with it. This is the Duralar and I'm also going to show you how to make it from like a product box, a folder, um, like a manila folder will work. 
card stock that you can run through a printer, you know, just a pack of that card stock. It's not going to hold up as well as the Duralar because the great thing, as I, I told you, is this is plastic or polyester and you can repeatedly wash this. You can kind of be rough with it and it's okay. It's going to hold up. But if you don't have that, that's okay. Something that I use, like some kind of heavyweight paper. This is something that came in the mail. And it's like, it's not quite poster board, but it's like the, the cover of like a little pamphlet. And it's sort of a stiff paper, but like the product box that I showed you in another demo um, that you can cut stuff out of, that's great. This would work great. It's a little thick, so I can, maybe I'll do a little test on that. You can't cut something small out of this, like those little holes. I think that might be a little hard to get to work. And this is done with a screw punch. Um, which I don't know if I have one here, but I can show you at some other time how to do that, a screw punch uh, to punch holes. You can also use like a hand punch, but you'd have to have like a skinny piece because you can only go so far with those. But something small is not gonna work. It would work okay with this, but it would not work with that, that cereal box or that uh, soda box. I think that's too thick. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how Okay, so again, you know, what are you gonna cut? I, you know, I don't know. You can try, try different things. You can draw it first if you feel like that's what you need to do. I don't really do that a lot. I'll kind of just kind of doodle something out and then cut it. That's like, since I got that lightning piece, I kind of did another little doodle like that. But let's say that's what I wanted to do. And sharp, like thin little point, that's not gonna hold very well. So I probably wouldn't keep to that. You know, and I draw lines and then sometimes I don't really follow them when I start to cut. Kind of went a little bit bigger because I felt like I needed to there. So that's the shape that I decided to cut here. And then with the mylar, I don't know, maybe I'll just cut lines like a few little straight lines, but I'm not worried about them being really straight. Okay. And this just kind of pops out and they have this stencil stuff at Joanne that I saw, but it looked really thick to me. It looked like it would be hard to cut, but they do have that at Joanne Fabric I saw or crafts, was that Joanne Crafts and Fabric? I don't know, wherever it is. It's a great store, I'm not trying to put it down, but the stuff they have is uh, not this. They don't have the Duralar, but they do have stencil material that you can make your own stencils with, but it, I think it looked hard to cut. But if you try it, I'd love to hear about it. So I'm gonna hold on to those pieces, Let's go with that. And let's try it out. So my piece of paper. And I'll just try this blue because it's probably going to show the best. And again, I'm going to try to hold it in place. And so before you get, if you want to do this, before you get to your real paper, test these things out before you get to the thing that you're trying to make look like your final piece that you want to turn in or you want to have as your, you know, the portfolio that you're going to make for your, uh, I don't know, for your parents or something, I don't know, or a job or whatever. The finished thing that you're going to do is not where I would start trying to figure out how to do this. Try it on a piece of paper first. So then I could come back with another color. Let's do the red on top of that. Got to be a little careful with that because uh, like some of that ink where I got 
where I started might kind of pull into there. Sometimes I'll turn it over and use the other side, but sometimes then that ink can transfer underneath. So whatever you do, you're just gonna have to be aware that the ink might transfer a little bit. But we try to minimize that. So you can see that did, it kind of pulled some of that blue in there. So the best thing would be to wash it between, actually it looks better on camera than it does in person. Um, because this looks brighter. And then, you know, you can think about using these little pieces. Wow, cool. Light fell down. Put that over there. Something like that. And then here's our little piece that we made here. Let's try the green. Just be careful you flip to the other side. So you can definitely use the cardstock. There's no problem. And if you're doing a book, you know, you're not making an addition in this class. For the most part, graduate students might have to in the end. Um, but for our class, mainly we're just doing singles. And so I think that works fine for uh, for one book. You know, what I think is that looks like a leaf. So I could turn it, go the other way with it. Oh, I got a lot of ink on there. <laughs> I dabbed too many times. It's all right. You know, wow, that's pretty interesting. Hmm. All the possibilities and my mind starts going wild. About, um, I wish I could quickly go grab the whole, the Japanese screw punch. I didn't share that. If that's what it's called, a Japanese screw punch, and it's just a little punch, and there's going to be times I'll use it later, so I'm not going to go grab it, but, you know, it's really cool to do that, especially with the Duralar. I don't think it would hold up very well on the cardstock, not for repeated use. So, and anyway, this gives you a sense of what's possible, again, with the stencils, and I think there's endless, endless, endless possibilities. So, you know, we showed, I showed you that one that's very structured and that's perfectly wonderful, but I almost feel like this, you could do the same thing, um, but that would be something that you might use, you know, to create a book that you're gonna make an addition of and you want them to look very similar each time you wanna be able to produce it the same way and they're gonna look the same. But this, I mean, I feel like if you did this, like this little area here, and you did it, maybe it's not, you could call it a variable addition, even though it's the same stencils in pretty much the same spot and in pretty much the same colors. Um, if you were gonna do an addition, you might call it a variable addition, but I think there's a lot of possibilities with this kind of looser structure, um, but it's still the same, same stencils used over, over and over again. So this is a good, this actually worked really well because it has kind of this slippery, I wonder if like poster board from, you know, wherever you can get poster board these days, CVS even has it, because it has that slick surface on one side like this, this kind of slid right over that, the ink kind of slid right over it and it really looked pretty sharp at the edges. Let me hold that up so you can see, and you can imagine too, if this were on white paper, it would have a different look to it. So let me show you that lightning bolt just because. I've used this a bunch of times. I really like this. I usually do that where I start dark on one side and then kind of fade out lighter on the other end. And you can just do it as light or as dark as you want. And I just kind of really like that effect that you get 
that it's not really solid. It's like layers of ink. Transparency, the overlapping here is nice. So you can imagine the possibilities there, what you might be able to do. All right, so that's the demo of the stencil of the pochoir. And um, for our class, I would like you to do it at least one time for one project, but you could also make sheets of decorative paper this way. Um, you can do a book when we get to the accordion books, like I showed you those examples, those are, that's a great time to use this. But really any time in our book arts class, um, I encourage you to use these techniques, the stamping and the pochoir technique, because they're inexpensive, they're available to you. Uh, you don't have to have a computer, you don't have to print anything out, you can just print right on the book or make your decorative paper, whatever you want to do, and it's just, it's there for you for the entire class. All right? All right, see you again soon. Bye-bye.